Yes, fish fans, welcome to the iPhone Diaries. This is a brand new little series from me where I go out fishing guesties at my mate's syndicates or even just some normal fishing that I enjoy to do myself. And in these episodes, I film the whole thing with nothing but my iPhone and a GoPro. So let's crack on with episode one. So my first episode takes me to a venue that I'd been invited to fish loads of times, and that's Stamford Hall Fisheries. It's owned by a good mate of mine, Jamie, and a friend, and it's one of those places that he kept saying, you've got to come down, Bones, you've got to come down. I've got some cracking fish in here. There's plenty of scaly ones. I think you would really like it. So I finally found the time and took up the opportunity and headed down to Essex. The big lake itself is five acres in size and originally dug for gravel. It is lovely and clear with a little bit of weed and an island in the middle. Top that up with just over 150 fish to 50 pound and this was right on my street. When I arrived, the lake was fairly busy, but I had a little wander around and settled on peg two. It had the island in front of me with a couple of nice looking snags, as well as a couple of little margin spots should I see some fish. So it was back to the van to get the gear and get it in the peg. I was buzzing by the time I got into the swim, so I got myself quickly set up, set up the marker rod, had a little cast so that I could set the distance to the island. Then it was a case of getting my rods all set up and deciding exactly where I was gonna put them. The plan was simple. The middle rod was going into a hole in the bushes on the island, which was in the snag. The next rod was gonna to go to the right of the snag and the next rod was gonna be a roving zig once I'd got those two set up. After that, just a few spawns of bait over the right hand rig that was placed just to the right of the snag and I was fishing. It was time to set up camp, sit back and relax and hopefully wait for the rods to tank off. Hey fish fans, so not a lot is happening. We're 11 o'clock on the first morning and one thing's for sure, last night was cold. I took the third layer out of my bed thinking, well, oh, it's been nice weather, I'm gonna be nice and warm. Oh, did the temperature drop last night and I got into my bed and I was like, oh no, what a disaster. And not only that, I left the third layer at home. So a bit of a chilly night. I couldn't believe how cold it actually dropped. It's now 11 o'clock and absolutely boiling. You can probably see I'm looking a bit pink. The sun's really come out and the fish have gone really quiet. I had quite a few shows last night. They were to my left in front of Fours Water and I was kind of hopeful of them moving over, but just nothing. Today, I haven't heard a fish show since this morning. Talking to the bailiff next door, he hasn't seen fish show like they were yesterday, which is a bit of a shame. I wish I'd have got here a little bit earlier yesterday, but unfortunately the M25 was closed. Love the M25. It sort of delayed me quite a bit, and by the time I'd got here and had a little nose round and found me swim and found me spots and stuff, it was quite late in the afternoon. Now, the lads tell me it does evening bites and morning bites. Now, the lake has got really busy. I think there's only one swim available now because it's the last week of the ticket for the guys down here on the sea. Syndicate. Of course, they want to try and make the most of the last week. Plus, the water temperature's warmed up, so the fish are a bit more active. They've definitely gone a bit quiet today, but then the sun is super bright and it's super warm, so I imagine they're having a bit of a sun just sat in the upper layers. So I put an adjustable zig out. I'm roving the zig around. I'm using a, an adjustable because I can keep monitoring wherever I cast it. It's gonna. I can set the depth, so I bring the float up. I know that when I bring it down two foot, that my zig's on top, and then I can just drop it just a foot below the surface, just nice and high, because with this sort of weather, I'm sure they'll be really right up in the water. My other two rods are really tight to the island, one in a hole on the snag and one to the right of the snag and they're in about six foot of water so I'm not worried about those needing to be up in the upper layers. So I'm going to keep moving that zig round and hopefully I can try and pick up a fish like that. But it's just so nice to come and do a little bit of this style of fishing. You know I'm sat here and I'm on my own which is unusual normally I'm out with Gaz and doing our bits that we're doing for the Tracker YouTube channel. But yeah it's a little bit different, a bit lonely, not cooking for myself. I do miss my Mr Hood, my partner in crime. But yeah 
I'm going to get on now. I'm going to move the zig again, have a little rove around, see if we can see something. Peg three has done a fish this morning down to his left in the little bay. He was just fishing in the margins. I've been keeping an eye on the margins, but I haven't seen any fish around. I'm going to hope that the wind dies down a little bit later because we've got a little bit of a breeze. It's blowing an easterly, which isn't the best wind for fishing, but it is beautiful weather and I'm absolutely loving being out on the bank. So for now, I'm going to crack on my day, do a little bit of work. I've got my laptop here and then see if we can uh, do something. But who knows? Come on the fishes. Yeah. So after a quiet night and a quiet morning, finally had my first take. And it was the rod that was just to the right of the snag on the island with a drop back. I was absolutely buzzing to be into my first fish. However, the fish wanted to put up one hell of a scrap. It went from left to right to left to right, getting me all caught up in both of the rods. Luckily, I managed to unknit them and then it was just down to playing the fish nice and carefully in the margins until I could get it in the net. It felt like a good fish and I was really, really pleased to have got my first bite. Finally, once it got into the net, I was absolutely buzzing to have got my first Stamford Hall Big Lake fish. Well then fish fans, no sooner had I finished filming that piece of camera for you to say it's all quiet and the right hand rod next to the snag has dropped back and would you have would you have a look at this? Now, when Jamie said to come down, he told me he'd got some pretty fish in here, but I was not expecting things like this. Would you have a look at that? 33 pound, eight ounce, hard fighting mirror carp. Oh, I'm so happy. First morning, first fish, and hopefully there's a couple more of these to come. Caught on a Ronnie rig, little PB pop up, tight to the snag. Little bit of eight millers over the top with some sweet corn and away she went. Anyway, let's get back in the water and get a few photos done. Come on, fish fans. <laughs> After that fish, I calm down for a little bit it's proper nice to catch a fish like that so i thought i would sit here and i would just talk you through the rig that i've been using the rig that's done me the fish is the good old ronnie rig it's got to be one of the most used rigs in carp fishing now personally i like to use a curve shank hook i'm seeing a lot of people using a wide gape but for me i like the curve shank because what i can do is combine it with a little bit of two mil shrink tubing and i can just make the shank of the hook longer and follow the curve by just bending it as i want it to be using the steam from the kettle i've then got that on one of the purpose ronnie swivels from signet attached to some semi stiff coated hook link with an anti-tangle couldn't really get much simpler this rig's just flawless there's so it's so good if anything picks it up it always resets itself combine that with something like i have i've got a 12 mil pb pop up there they hold up a size six absolutely perfectly there's no need for any extra putty that may come off you know that it can get snagged up on a, on a recast you might not have noticed that the put is gone it just sits there absolutely perfect and any fish that comes along and sucks that in is getting nailed what i've done now moving into the evening i've put the solid bag back inside the bush where i've had it all day i've gone to the right hand side of the snag where i had the fish and i've put the same ronnie rig well it's not the same rig it's a new one with a fresh hook right tight to the island again and then I've moved my third rod much further along the island to another snag where it's, I can get in real tight. So I was really happy with that cast. Got it in there real tight, got a two second countdown. So I know I'm sat in about seven, eight foot of water, which is gonna be a bit warmer at this time of year. This lake is fairly deep. It's about 20 foot out in front of me. I just feel that them fish are gonna be sat around the margins, around the islands, looking for that warmer water. But for now, I'm gonna sit back, get the kettle on. Hopefully we'll have another fish layer. Everyone's partner loves this part of the session, but no carp angler does. It's time to get the rods in. I've stretched it a bit longer than I should have done. I've got to get home and get some work done, but how can you want to leave a place like this? I did see some fish show to my left. I've got a rod on them, but it hasn't gone off and my margin spots over the other side haven't done anything either. I've had no liners last night or anything. So it is time to head off. 
I've really enjoyed having my guestie down here and I can't thank Jamie enough and the guys at Stanford Hall Fisheries for allowing me. You know, if you guys want me to come and guestie with you, feel free to drop me a message on Instagram and uh, I'll maybe get down and add it to another part of these iPhone diaries. But for now, let's get the rods in. I'll catch up with you soon.